Good morning, everyone. Thank you for starting the day out with me. I'm Jenna Stauffer. I think we all are familiar with one of Hollywood's most prominent female stars, that being Joan Crawford. This morning, you're going to get to become familiar with her son-in-law, David Kuntz. Now, here in Key West, he is a commercial mortgage broker, but his background is so elaborate. He's been a commercial, theatrical, and motion picture producer. I'm just naming a couple of things. He'll share some more with us this morning. David, thank you so much for being here with me. Thanks, Jenna. <laughs> all right, happy late birthday, first of all. <laughs> thank you very much. It was you, nice to be on the show with you. Yeah, you just You're celebrated the, another year. I did. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's going to be a wonderful year. Well, I, I hope so. I think it will be. <laughs> I think it will be. I think it will be. And you're one of the prettiest hosts that I've been on television with. Well, and I've been on you. television a lot well, the, I, uh, over the years. That's a very nice yeah. compliment. Thank you. Yeah, it's true. David, before we get into your Hollywood years, I want to take it back to when you were in Detroit. That's where you were born and raised. That's where I was born and raised. Mm -hmm. And it was a beautiful town back then. Mm -hmm. um, I was a, uh, uh, an art student, and I became, uh, I kept pursuing that, and I became an art director with Campbell Ewald, the agency for Chevrolet. And eventually, I became a television producer Mm -hmm. with them for commercials and that kept going and I kept getting more and more work from them for that and they finally moved me to Los Angeles to head up California the West Coast office and where we did that mm -hmm. and uh, we we did most of the big famous Chevrolet commercials mm -hmm. top and putting the car on top of Chimney Rock and all kinds of other things that you wouldn't remember, but there <laughs> they were there, and it was a it was a fun time and a busy time. Mm -hmm. And during your years doing the commercials, David, that was when you met Christina Crawford. Oh, How did you meet right. her exactly? I'm, I actually met Christina when I was casting for uh, a stunt driver. I needed a young lady who could be like a young mom and drive a pickup truck through the mountains and she had to avoid an avalanche which of course we caused but she had to avoid it and be able to drive through without tip, flipping the car off flipping the truck off the side of the mountain so she did a good job mm -hmm. and she wanted to do this commercial, yeah she was she? she wanted to do that commercial of course doing a commercial can be a, worth a lot of money mm -hmm. to you know to young actresses mm -hmm. um, and uh, or to even old actresses it doesn't make any difference um, but she did a really good job mm -hmm. and I met her and we became friends and then we started dating and then it went just on from there and, uh, and some 17 18 years later mm -hmm. uh, we had been married for I think about 12 13 years I forget just exactly mm -hmm. but we had a vineyard and winery and we did all kinds of things and um, when she did Mommy Dearest it was very very difficult with her so I was for her mm -hmm. and I was sort of like her bodyguard yeah. you and, were, uh, and you were the one David you really wanted her you insisted in fact that she write the book and really share her story that's right and when her mother died uh, when her mother died uh, it was really incumbent upon her to write that story because it was really her story. Mommy Dearest is not a book or story about Joan Crawford. It's about a young girl growing up at the hands of an abusive parent. That's one of the reasons that the, the buyers of the book sold well over 10 million copies, but the average buyer was a 17-year-old 17, 17 to 20-year-old young woman who had no knowledge of who Joan Crawford was at the time. I mean, just had, they didn't know anything about Joan Crawford. What they did know is they knew about the story because they related to the story. And that's what made it successful. Mm -hmm. And that's what caused the uprising in the abuse world. Mm -hmm. It used to be that you could abuse your child and if it was really serious, like killing them, in California it was a $3,000 fine. That was all. Mm -hmm. um, 
and that was the case in many states. And when Christina got on the road and started really, really getting after the laws and pointing out what was going on, support groups formed and helped her. She didn't do it by herself, but she certainly was the catalyst for waking up not only this country, but the rest of the world about child abuse. Mm -hmm. And now, as opposed to then, now it's totally against the law. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll go to jail. And if a doctor doesn't report child abuse, which was the one of the most uh, flagrant misuses of the doctor's credentials, where they didn't report, they would say that that child who had a concussion uh, fell down the stairs because mm -hmm. that's what the parents told him. He knew different, and he and he saw that because the the child kept coming in, they kept mm -hmm. bringing him in to patch him up. Mm -hmm. And when you get that kind of repetition, the, the medical profession knows. And they know what causes a broken leg to a little girl or to, an, uh, to a little boy. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, so, that, so now it's against the law. Mm -hmm. And that was largely uh, Christina as a catalyst to, uh, to wake the country up. Mm -hmm. And with the support of many, many groups echoing what she was saying, she became their masthead mm -hmm. uh, that, that, got, that were before they couldn't get anybody's attention mm -hmm. because it used to be where only poor people would abuse their children because they were poor mm -hmm. and they were under a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. So that's what they gave the justification for beating the daylights out of a little boy or a little girl. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm not going to get into any kind of the details of what I was privy to seeing, or unfortunately I saw in the various children's hospitals and other things like that. Mm -hmm. It was really terrible. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it became hard for me to continue. And that, and I, in the industry, I guess it's called being get burnt out. Mm -hmm. And, and you so, got burnt out. Yeah, with I everything. got burnt out with everything. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, David, we're going to take a quick break right now, but we're going to talk much more about Mommy Dearest and then the motion picture that it eventually okay. became. Okay. Stay with us. There's much more to come this morning.